Roadside Picnic is a 1972 science fiction novel by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. Extraterrestrial aliens have visited Earth. The materials they left behind, junk to the aliens, are valuable and powerful artifacts for mankind, but the visitation zones are also beset with dangerous unexplained phenomena. Those who venture in risk their lives with the hope of scavenging something of value. The book builds an atmospheric science fiction world, but it ultimately is a story of human relationships in a society adapting to a strange new reality. This is the standard edition of the book published by the Folio Society in 2023. They also simultaneously published a limited edition. As usual, the book comes in a slipcase, but a little bit unusually, that slipcase bears this metallic illustration inspired by themes from the book. What makes this a little bit of a treat is that if we flip the slipcase around, we see that there's another completely different illustration on the opposite face. So that's two illustrations already on the slipcase. The slipcase, by the way, is bound in paper, but it has this texture to it. It reminds me very much of a book wrap, and it feels like a cloth slipcase, even though it's wrapped in paper. And the slipcase is lined also with white paper. Within the slipcase, we have the volume itself, and it follows the same sort of design language as the slipcase. So we have this same textured paper covering. It's not cloth, unfortunately. Um, but again, we have on the front board an illustration, again, with this spot UV metallic effect to it. And just like the slipcase, there's a second different illustration on the rear board. The spine is quite elaborately blocked. We have here the title, Roadside Picnic, and then we can read the author's names, Boris and Arkady Strigatsky. We have the Fairly Society colophon there. One thing that's a little bit unusual again about this edition is that the page edges on all three sides are digitally printed with a design by the illustrator. And you see that they have this perhaps slightly grungy, slightly organic look to them. Again, that reflects, I think, thematically the book. Um, and this is a design language that will be picked up throughout the book. Of course, the binding is sewn and we have matching green end bands there. So overall, I think first impressions here are very positive. This is a standard edition. It's towards the bottom end of Folio's price range. That perhaps explains why we have a paper binding rather than a cloth one. But at that sort of price point, it's quite unusual to have a slipcase that is printed, let alone printed with two metallic illustrations. Again, front and back boards printed on the book, printed page edges. So a lot of features here for a relatively modest price. Then we open it up. We have custom printed end papers. And if I skip ahead, we can see that we also have printed end papers at the back and there to a different design. So we have two different end paper designs. And this is a design theme that is now going to recur throughout the book. So we see here the half title. It has again a completely different set of designs. Here's the title page again with its own designs. The contents and copyright page. Um, the list of illustrations. And then we go into the text with an illustrator's introduction, again with this design element here. And as we go through the book and we reach new chapters, they too will have a similar design theme going on. So the whole book feels incredibly richly designed because as well as the usual complement of illustrations that one expects in a Folio Society edition, we have these visually striking, thematically appropriate page designs as we go along. Turning back here to the copyright page, we see some other details of the interior design. So the text is set in PT serif, which is quite a modern, um, very clean font. I think it's quite readable. And we have display set in a face called Filth of Icarus. So we can see that on display here in the title. Also here in the text alongside the title on the title page. This is a fairly interesting hybrid between a modern looking face like Futura 
but also then with this slightly grungy look to it again, one can see some imperfections in the text. And I think that's a nice marriage that are, again is thematically appropriate for the book. So, so far, from a design point of view, things are looking quite positive. Um, the book was illustrated by Dave McKean, and somewhat unusually, we have an introduction from the illustrator. Um, it's a very nice introduction, brief as it may be, because one really gets the impression that McKean here is not merely paying lip service to the book, but really resonates artistically with the book. And so it's nice to have an account of his impression of the book. And one can see a little bit how it informed his thinking as an artist and how that might be reflected in his illustrations. Next up is a foreword by renowned science fiction author Ursula K. Le Guin. Again, it's a very sensitively written introduction. Clearly, she understands what this book is about, um, and I think she was a great choice to write that introduction. And then we go into the text of the novel itself. Again, you can see we're still getting these design elements going on. This is what one normally expects at the beginning of a new chapter. And here we see the text. The book actually opens with a transcript of an interview with a scientist, which is why the type here doesn't look particularly dense. But then as we go into the first chapter proper, we get a taste of the typographic layout that will carry us through most of the book. Um, it's a fairly readable layout, nothing too remarkable about it. And so now what I would do is I will skip along and we'll take a look at some of Dave McKean's illustrations. The illustrations have the look of a digital collage. I'm not sure if that was part of their final assembly, but I do know that Dave McKean created with wet media elements that go into these images. And there's quite a lot of creativity going into the various elements that have been brought together here to have this again, grungy look that I think captures the atmosphere of the book quite well. Arriving the second illustration here, one perhaps detects a bit of Francis Bacon's influence in the illustrations. Here is the third image, comprised of a number of elements that reflect different things that are going on in the story at that particular point. There's another illustration. Here we have the last pair of illustrations and something else that's interesting here is that these illustrations, as one can see, are not only two page, but they're on this separate fold out sheet. So we have an illustration here on the front face and then flipping it over, we have another two page illustration on the reverse. After we're finished with the novel, we arrive at an afterword, which was written by Boris Strugatsky. In this afterward, he gives an account of publishing the book. And this is of some historical interest because the book was published in Russia during the Soviet era. And the Strugatsky brothers had to run the gauntlet of the censors. And so we have a sometimes comical account of just how weird it could be trying to publish a relatively innocuous book under that quite strict communist regime. And so that in itself was an interesting read and very nice to have as a component of this edition. So that is Roadside Picnic, published in 2023 by the Folio Society in this standard edition. I really like this edition very much indeed. I think at its modest price point, it offers an awful lot. Four illustrations on binding and slipcase. We have the printed page edges seven two-page illustrations, all of those illustrated page backgrounds that I think had a lot of richness to the interior design. There's an awful lot going on here and it all ties very nicely thematically into the book and helps to build the atmosphere of a book that is already very atmospheric in its own right. So top marks to Folio Society. I think they've done a great job with this one, paper binding notwithstanding. And I'm very glad to have it as part of my collection.